Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we'll be going over our next big component. And that is the adder. That's right, we're getting into doing math. And you know, you can't have math with computers unless you have binary. So the very first thing we're going to go over is how binary works. And don't worry, it's not nearly as bad as you probably think it is. So I'm just going to lay down a couple of wires here and we're going to use these as pretty much our, present our representation of binary. So I have a few new switches and these are binary wires. I flip them and they are inputting binary numbers. So how in the world does this work? Well it might make it a little easier if I did this. You start with one, this is how you decode binary, then the next one, you double that, and then you double that, and then you double that, and you keep going on until you get to however many numbers you want, your <coughs> however many binary numbers you have. And basically, these are the numbers they represent, which may be a little confusing at first, but in actuality, it's not that bad. So let me try and explain this to you. If I wanted the number 1, guess which switch I flip? Number 1. If I wanted the number 4, hey, that's the switch for number 4. Guess what I'd flip? 4. So, th th the only thing that really has significant meaning is the on state. The on state means you're getting that number. The off state simply means you're not getting anything. So if I'm in all off states, then I'm not getting any numbers. But what if I wanted the number 3? I mean, in how on earth will I do that? There's no free switch. Well, this is where hair binary gets a little bit weird. Because according to the rules of binary, you should input the numbers that add up to the actual number you want. So, if I wanted the number 3, I have a 2, and I have 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So, 3 in binary would be this. And that's pretty much how binary works. If you don't hard a little shaky on it, I'll admit I have been doing a little bit more of a quick explanation rather than a furrow one, so... I'll, but hopefully you'll understand it more later, because it's really something you have to use in practice before you really understand it. So for now, we're just focusing on two things. One and two. And in fact, even for now, we're going to get rid of the two. We're just going to focus on the one. Although I'm going to put that sign back for future reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an adder that, at first, can only handle the single digit, the one digit. And then, slowly but surely, we'll build it up to handle as many binary digits as you could possibly want. So hang on, I need a drink of water. Mm, sorry about that. Anyways, so, first, let's just examine what we're going to do. First, we're going to have two inputs. Input 1, input 2. Both of them are going to represent the number 1, except this is like 1a, I guess you could say, so 1a, and this is like 1b. So, both of them are being added together. It's just... Yeah, so we only have but so many combinations here. We can do 1 plus 0, which is 0. We can do 0 plus 0, which is zero. Wait, I'm sorry, 1 plus 0, which is 1. 0 plus 0, which is 0. And we can do 1 plus 1, or we can do 0 plus 1, which is 1. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> and, or we can do 1 plus 1, which is 0. And you might be saying, whoa, 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 1 plus 1 isn't 0. Well, like I said, we are only dealing with a single digit right now. If I had 1 plus 1, that would be equal to 2. So in binary, it would be like this, right? And look at the ones place. It's off. So in terms of the ones place, 1 plus 1 is 0. So now it's a little bit weird, but if you might notice, there's something that does something pretty similar to that. If we have no input, we have no output. If we have 1, we have the output, which is a 1. If we have the other one, we have an output, which is a 1. And if we have both, we have no output, because uh, it's supposed to pass on to the 2. We already have something that can do that. It's our friend, the XOR gate. If 
Flip a one, you get a one. Flip both, one plus one is one zero. But of course you can't do that. So that's how you handle two inputs. But what if I wanted to have a third input? So we have like one A and one B and our little friend one C. How do we handle this? So now if we have two, it'll handle just like normal, but we, if we have the three, then our result could be this. So we will have to handle the second digit if we are going to have three inputs. First off, let's just handle doing three digits in the ones place. So if it's just, so if it's an odd number of inputs, then it's going to be zero. An odd number is going to be a one. If it's an even number of inputs, it's going to be a zero. Which is a little bit of an odd thing, but it can be achieved by pretty much just extending an XOR gate so by with another XOR gate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine that little funky one we did onto this. And it went something like this, I think. Yeah, it's more like this, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. And this so that means this would be our our input went. And since if this is at input zero, this input's just going to be passed through if we, we don't have anything with the other input. And there. Okay, so we can handle two digits now. One plus... nothing is one plus one... Oh, so we're having a bit of an issue. Let's find out what the issue is. So what? from what I can tell, the issue is that I forgot to put a torch here. So I'm going to put a torch there and... It looks like that fixed it. So, if I flip one more, we're getting one zero. So any combination of two will get me a zero. The combination of three will get me a one. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now it's time for the final challenge. How do we get this pesky two out of there? It's, I mean, it's gonna have to be in there somewhere. We just don't really know how to get it out. Well, I'd like to go back to the original XOR gate for a moment. If you notice, there is one torch that only turns on when we have both inputs. Remember our friend the control torch? Yeah. So, we ha this setup conveniently places our two control torches right next to each other. So if I was to get power from them, then this wire will only turn on when we have at least two. And since we aren't having four inputs, it can't, can't turn back to zero. So if we have at least two, this will always be one, mathematically and in reality. So if I can do real binary math now. One plus nothing is one. One plus one is one zero. One plus one plus one is one one. <laughs> and yeah, so this is our addition component, built with two XOR gates and this little wire coming out of of the control wires from our XOR gates. So yeah, thank you. I will. S I guess I'll see you in the next video, where we'll go over... Actually, I'll leave that as a surprise for the next video. Thank you. See you then.